Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Colleagues, uh, somebody said to me earlier, we live in interesting times. Uh, how often have we been able to say that in our lives? But I mean, what's happening right now across the United States is affecting all of us in some way. I've been in law enforcement for a long time, and you all know that. And I know when people look at me, I represent a certain thing to them. I know that some people look at me as uh, law enforcement, some people look at me as a state representative, and some people think they know how I believe and because of what I do. I wish I could express my heart about what is happening across the United States, what happened in Minneapolis, what's happening in the various cities. I wish I could express to everyone, I guess, some level of shame for what happened. I wish I could let everyone know how deeply it affects those of us who do our job with a sense of honor and duty, that I know I carry a great deal of responsibility out there doing my job. But more importantly, I think I want to express to those who may feel that I'm indifferent to it, and not just me, but those like me, my friends, my colleagues in law enforcement, who we talk all the time about these situations when they come up, and what would you say? And it's so hard, I think, to, to get that message across and have any genuineness to it if you don't know me. Um, but I know that there are people who are hurting now, and they're angry about the way things have, how things have transpired in this country across races, and it's interpreted as some type of group effort and it's hurting us. And we need to do something as a people, and I don't just mean this body, but as a people. I'm a strong believer in Christ. I believe that there is a message in there that we are to love each other and to do what we need to do to communicate what we need to communicate in order to make that happen. I think it's interesting what the representative said about you don't know me. And sometimes we really only know the person on how they present themselves. But there's more to a person and some things we will never know. You received something on your desk yesterday from a representative, and I want to start with that. Hall of Famer Kareem Abdul-Jabbar said, racism in America is like dust in the air. It seems invisible, even if you're choking on it until you let the sun in, then you see it everywhere. So dust is so minute. But I would have to say, there's so many people really suffering now. Not only from the pandemic that we don't have a vaccine for, but because they're afraid of their loved ones being sick dying, they're afraid that they may be dying, and we don't know what our fate is. But what we do know is George Floyd did not die 
in a dignified manner. We know that we are born and we know every day we live we're getting closer to dying. And we never know when it's going to be. But I think most of us would like to have a peaceful death. We would like to have people who know us and love us be there for us. And in the pandemic, many did not have that kind of compassion. And on the street, Mr. Floyd did not have that kind of a death. So what I think I would ask of you is what I believe we learned in Bible school and in church and from our moms and dads and grandmas and aunts and uncles. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And that sounds very simple, but it's very difficult to do because there's some people we may not like, some people we are afraid of, some people that are a different race, some people that have a different skin color, and the things we think about them because we don't know them. And you just heard your representative say, you may not know me, and we may not know some of these people. We know they are black. We know they're Hispanic. We know they're Native American. We know they're Asian. We know they're a woman. We know they're a man. We know those things. But we really don't know what's in a person's heart. And I think Mr. Floyd's family is going through an extremely difficult time. And we have seen all the demonstrations and we have seen all the things. And some people take advantage of a situation. And other people are appalled that they take advantage of it. But it does not negate the fact that a horrible, a terrible, a painful thing occurred. And we saw the videos that showed it. I believe we are a compassionate people. We care about people. And I have my mask on and I'm gonna put it on again. I received this mask yesterday from one of our colleagues who made it because I admired the one she had. She didn't have to do that. She cared. I had a legislator come up to me and several saying, I am so sorry that you are going through this. I appreciated those comments because it made me feel that you can be white, you can be conservative, you can be whoever you are, but you cared about what happened. It was a human being. It might have been a black man, but it was a human being. And there's no one in this room would want that to happen to their brother, their son, their uncle, or whoever. You wouldn't. I know you wouldn't. And I was pleased to be asked to say something about it because my heart has been heavy, heavy, heavy. And I think of our son, and if that had happened to our son, you guys might as well have been coming to my funeral because I would not have wanted to continue to live without our son. And I can only say that's how I think maybe his mother and his father felt. So I hope we will, whatever our differences we have, we shouldn't have a difference about the death of an American 
an African American, an African American male. We have to be a loving people who care, who try to make a difference, and will speak up when things are not right. And that we should be a people that seek justice Without justice, many people don't know that you care. And it cannot continue to repeat itself. And I trust that we, in this chamber that was elected by so many people in 105 counties, because they feel and believe we can represent them. We can represent them. But we also have to be compassionate and have love if we want to stop this kind of behavior. I know we can do that. And I ask you to please do that. Because serving in this chamber has been one of the greatest honors I've had. And I hope you feel that way too. People believed in you and trust in you. And for police officers, when something goes wrong, we want them to come and help us. That's why we call, we want them to help. So not all are going to do things that they should not do. I believe public, they're public servants. So let's think highly of those that do the things we want and those that don't, that they have to pay for what they do. We are a loving people, and we were created to be a loving people. There was a reason for each of us to be in this room today, and I hope as we leave, we will always care regardless of who that person is and what their skin color is. Thank you, Barbara. I, you know, I just want to say that when we talked about doing this, one of the things I said to her is that we don't need to rehearse what we're going to say because I've heard her speak from her heart before and I know what, I know how she would present it. And um, I have a great deal of respect for what you just said. Um, the ideas that, that come out of us on this issue can be so easily misinterpreted or forced one direction or the other. And uh, I think if we listen with our hearts at this time, the emotion of it, um, I think we get the correct message out of it. We have to learn, and, and maybe as a, as a country, we represent that now, that we can change and we can show others how diversity can make good things happen, even out of the bad. And we have that opportunity. And I want to invite anyone who um, has an opinion about uh, what is happening. You can talk to me about it. I don't have any problem listening to uh, both sides of this issue. I get it. And, and I'm absolutely opening myself up to, to hear those things from you. So um, I just want to put that invitation out there. And I want to thank you for coming up here and uh, letting us share with you. And I want to thank you. And what you said, you don't know me, but I think I know a little bit more about you.
Thank you. Thank you very Thank you much. much. And from the old civil rights times, I think what's appropriate maybe right now to say, since we don't have answers, is if we work hard, if we love, if we care, if we speak up, and if we remember that all human beings have dignity, Amen. then we shall overcome. Amen. We shall overcome. Would you please say that with us? We, we shall, shall overcome. overcome. A little bit louder. We, we shall, shall overcome. overcome. And we have to believe that. Thank you so much.